Representative Chantel Brown and challenger and former state senator Nina Turner will once again face off today in a Cleveland area race in Ohio's primary election for Ohio's House seat in the 11th district. Brown beat Turner in a special primary race last summer, but Turner is challenging her again. Former Progressive Caucus co-chair Mark Polkan said that when the caucus, quote, took the vote, no one voted not to endorse Chantel. The good news is we have two great progressives running. We like these options. This comes after President Joe Biden endorsed Brown's re-election bid last Friday. He said in a statement that Brown has been, quote, an ardent advocate for the people of Ohio and a true partner in Congress. Chantel is committed to building a better America. Brianna, I see you, I see you flinching. Explain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this, this was a big deal on the left because no one knew who Chantel Brown was before last summer. She has never been an advocate for any progressive policy. She did, was not an advocate for uh, Medicare for All. She spent the whole campaign last summer trying to appropriate Nina Turner's progressive positions and accuse Nina Turner of not being progressive because she voted against the Democratic platform because it was insufficiently progressive. She only recently became a member of the Congressional Progressive Caucus a few months ago, um, seemingly only as a cover for the endorsement process now. And the idea that Mark Polk has now revealed that it wasn't even a nail biter. There wasn't even any dissension in the ranks when the CPC voted to endorse her over, you know, Bernie Sanders 2020 co-chair Nina Turner and want someone who's considered to be one of the most um, high profile progressives on the left. It's it's a real betrayal. It just really puts another level on the betrayal of the endorsement in the first place. I think it also really just goes to show how the establishment was just never really going to ever get behind Bernie Sanders. I know this is about Nina, but it's she's kind of viewed as an extension of Bernie in a lot of ways. And I, I really loved Nina and really thought that, wow, you know, this really could be another rising politician and uh, kind of take the mantle from Bernie Sanders as he's gotten older and maybe he's not going to run again. Really had high hopes for Nina. But it seems like the establishment just is once again burying uh, the, that real progressive left wing, and like what I would consider true progressive left wing er, uh, part of the party. Do, I mean, you covered this when there was the special election. What are the chances now for Nina today? Well, my understanding is that there are a lot of things that have happened that benefit Senator Turner with respect to the newly drawn district lines, a part of town that did not go for her, which was more affluent and more white, is no longer in her district and a part of the of Cleveland that went very heavily for Bernie Sanders is now a part of her district. There is some evidence that she is doing better uh, because there was some stuff with early voting that didn't work out for her in the last time around where the early voting ballots went out at the same time as a lot of um, uh, anti-Senator Turner pamphlets. They were well-timed and people filled those out and sent their ballots in before the subsequent advertising on TV that pushed back against Chantel Brown went out. And so Nina Turner lost in part and or largely because of the early ballot the same day uh, ballots went for Senator Turner. So you could get a different outcome. And again, the race is today, nothing's over yet. But what's really striking about this is that when it came out that the CPC had endorsed Chantel Brown, there was some thought that maybe individuals who had endorsed Senator Turner last time or Cori Bush, who has been seen on the campaign trail, you know, with uh, uh, Nina Turner and being supportive of Nina Turner, would separately come out and endorse. And that maybe even though the CPC endorsed, there was dissension in the ranks. What, what Mark Pocan is saying in that clip is that there was a unanimous agreement within the CPC to support uh, Chantel Brown. That is, that is, it's one thing to expect some people who have shown less integrity within the CPC to go for Chantel Brown. We all understand the CPC is not really a progressive organization. It's a weird allotment of people that is a, huge, a large, like 100-person caucus, which really undermines the idea that there's any kind of organizing ideological principle. The fact that Chantel Brown is in it belies the idea that there's any real organizing ideological principle, but this is another level. Yeah, Representative Pramila Jayapal defended the CPS's endorsement of Brown over Nina Turner, but she said she did understand the frustration and that the CPC might change their endorsement standards not to support members taking giant PAC money, whether it's from crypto billionaires or from the Democratic majority for Israel. And Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez has now endorsed Turner in the rematch. AOC supported Senator Turner in her previous matchup as well. This endorsement came in last night 
in the 11th hour, the day before the election. And some people are saying better late than never. Some people are saying if you were planning to do this, why on earth would you would do you it now, except minute. for that you're trying to make up for all the backlash the CPC has received because of its endorsement of Brown? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. She, yeah. Well, she's, could it be related to all the heat she's getting over the, the Amazon thing, the labor stuff? She's sort of starting to feel vulnerable on, or, or disliked or upset the progressives are yeah this is almost like the progressive token like oh okay i'm I'm still a progressive here let me endorse nana turner i i don't know but it seems like the 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 left liberals everybody is really struggling to gain any credibility with the base who have been largely you know dismissed and undermined a lot of people were frustrated that it seemed immediately the democratic party is fundraising off of this uh, leaked uh, opinion that seems to be overturning Ray, Ray, Roe and Casey. The idea that the Democratic Party is nothing more than a fundraising mechanism that pokes its head up periodically to say, you know, oh, something bad happened, give us money, without ever demonstrating an ability to show a return on that investment. And so here you have AOC, who, remember, was someone who made a big fuss when Ro Khanna did not endorse her in her race against Joe Crowley because she was mm-hmm. obviously the more progressive candidate. And Ro Khanna at the time, after a hard night on Twitter going back and forth with some people, ultimately decided to co-endorse both of those candidates. Now we have AOC back in a position <laughs> to, to either say, you know, How interesting. <laughs> you're an enormous hypocrite, basically, if you don't come out and endorse Nina Turner. And I think that might have been, have been what ultimately got her to do this in the 11th hour. But it almost, from my perspective, feels more disrespectful than, than staying out of it at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Another thing I just want to mention is I cannot believe that it isn't just an absolute requirement that in order to be endorsed by the Progressive Caucus, you're not taking big money. That should be the first thing, right? Like you cannot be taking big money if you want this endorsement. How is that not standard? Absolutely. Excellent question. And I think that's that's why they got these people on the fence. That's why Jaya Paul is on the fence in that quote saying, well, I guess, you know, that's a that's a solid point. I guess we should consider whether you're taking big oh corporate gosh. money. A lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of feels. A lot of feels going on. Tomorrow on Rising, we'll discuss the Camp Lejeune Justice Act and hear from a man born at the base who says his exposure to toxic chemicals as a child led to cancer. Mm. And we'll, of course, continue to follow the developments out of the Supreme Court. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss one of our episodes. And also be sure to follow us wherever you listen to podcasts. You can get us there, download it, uh, and listen to us on the go. Thank you guys so much for watching. We will see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.